The history of Latinos in baseball goes way back. Players from Minnie Minoso to Luis Aparicio to Ozzie Guillen have been fan favorites on Chicago's South Side for decades. Never has the Latino presence on the White Sox roster been more important than this year when the Sox could have seven or more players of Latino heritage starting in the playoffs that begin tomorrow in Houston. And joining us to discuss the impact of Latino players on the White Sox and on baseball in general is Adrian Burgos Jr., a history professor at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and co-author of the book Play Ball in the Barrios and the Big Leagues. All right, we talked about the history of the White Sox and Latino ball players. How deep does that history go? Yeah, the Cuban connection of the White Sox really started with Orestes Minoso, who we all became fans of as many, um, and it, it grew from that. Those 1950s White Sox had Aparicio, it had many. There was Jim Rivera, New York Puerto Rican, who was on the team. So that diversity from Venezuela, Cuba, the Caribbean, and even the United States was represented on the Sox, and they brought it back really in a way that was really powerful in the 1990s and 2000s where we saw Alexei Ramirez and Jose Contreras and El Duque take their turns pitching for the White Sox. Not to mention former manager Ozzie Guillen. I mean, obviously front office personnel want to put together the best team possible, but was that a thought in their mind to continue that Latino uh, heritage, you think? I think it was part of their strategy. As you see this in both how they use Latino players to recruit one another. Grandal knows about the experience of Jose Abreu there, the experience of Joan Moncada, the reception these ball players have had. I think the White Sox have been very smart in that they know that if they build a culture that's welcoming to these Cuban players, to Latino players, that they'll love playing for this team. There is a history there. And I mentioned Alexei Ramirez and also Jose Abreu when the Sox were recruiting these guys. They brought Manny Minoso out to be part of like what brought these players in. And one thing for certain, Cubans know their baseball history. Um, I saw that on the times that I was traveling to Cuba to do research. And Abreu and and these other ball players, they know that Minoso has a very special place in baseball history. The White Sox know it, and they use that to help bring these players along. And you're talking about the Cuban connection here, uh, but of course, I mean, uh, uh, countries like Venezuela, Mexico, Puerto Rico are, are represented. I, I think Hawk Harrelson made the point that he believed that Latin American-born players played with an extra sort of uh, gusto. They had a little bit more fun. It wasn't so much about analytics. Is that what sets uh, Latin American players apart, do you believe? Latino players have their own baseball culture in Venezuela. I mean, again, there's a Venezuelan connection of White Sox baseball. It goes Carasquial to Aparicio to Ozzy Guillen. And, you know, they all play with this desire, but also this joy. I think that what often has caused some uh, strife for uh, a lot of folks uh, who are not Latino in baseball is that Latinos are exuberant. They celebrate their achievements. They celebrate their teammates' achievement, partly because many of these ball players are coming from countries and societies that have been torn apart by political strife, by economic turmoil. And to be a major leaguer, to realize that dream, it's like to celebrate life for them. Like they made it. They have the opportunity to play in the strongest league in the world, league baseball, and to excel. And we see that in how uh, Eloy Jimenez jokes around with Elise Robert out in the outfield. And then you see it in the joy of Lurie Gar Garcia. And th that team, that White Sox team, is so loaded with Latino talent. And, you know, the most serious of them all is Jose Abreu. Right. But even he, you see that smile pop up and Jose smiles. The rest of the team, they kind of feel like it's going to be all right. It certainly seems like they have an extra amount of fun playing the game. And I think Hawk Harrelson was lamenting the fact that not all players had that kind of fun. That That's what he believes baseball is supposed to be. Uh, what about the White Sox marketing outreach? Have they done extra things to sort of, because as we know, the Chicago area has an immense uh, Latino population. Yeah, the White Sox have done this concentrated effort for well over a decade. They've been involved in community outreach. Um, a couple of years ago, before the pandemic struck and we all went into quarantine, um, there was this festival I attended in, uh, in Pilsen. 
and the Sox had their booth there. They had people from the community relations there. Uh, Julissa Montez uh, is one of those individuals who's this connection between the White Sox organization and the community. And she follows a tradition of what the what Sox have been doing. They're, the Sox have a very diverse fan base in terms of socioeconomic class, but also in terms of race and ethnicity. When you go to Sox Park, uh, Grand Tree Great Park, and you walk the, the, the pavilion and you walk through the concourse, you smell the, the, that, that uh, ethnic blend, uh, you enjoy the voices of different accents, at least I do, um, and you get a sense that this is part of the Sox business plan of bringing diverse fans together and giving them a team and a culture to celebrate. Very quickly, uh, you know, there were some issues about 10 years ago when scouts were convicted of skimming money from Latino players. Has this uh, been a problem? Uh, scouts maybe taking advantage of players that, that weren't from the country, that didn't speak the language? Well, we definitely saw how Major League Baseball began to enact a number of reforms to address this problem of the players being exploited by individuals who are skimming the bonuses. And the entire system, however, of bringing in 16-year-old Latinos from Venezuela, from Colombia, excuse me, not Colombia, from, from Dominican Republic, you know, it's a system that, that the stakes are high to these individual players to get a 50, 70, 100, 200, a million dollar signing bonus. And so what MLB has done is try to make sure that the player gets the bonus they signed for. But the system is hinged upon major league teams trying to sign these players ever more cheaply. And the international signing pool has been a mechanism by which they've sought to suppress the, um, the signing bonuses that players are getting. Well, it's, a, it's an important issue that it looks like Major League Baseball has uh, started to tackle. And the White Sox, of course, begin their series with Houston tomorrow. Jose Abreu, flu-like symptoms, but it looks like he'll be a game-time decision. So we'll watch for that. And our thanks to Adrian Burgos, Jr. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me on.